Welcome back to another episode of Tainted Warriors. I'm Mikey. I'm Nicole. And this week, we got an episode that we call What Are the Chances? Where we're kind of just going to go over some random shit for you and tell you what the odds are of going through it. Right? I think it's kind of fun, cute idea. Switch it up a little bit. Uh, I don't think I've actually seen anything on YouTube that's like this. I so maybe really we're looked. onto something here. But before we get into it, let's start you off with our question of the week. All right. This week it is, where would you be found at a party? Well, I'm pretty sure we all know if I was at a party, I'm most likely... Living rooms are usually the dance floor, and I'm going to be right there, center, shaking my little thing to whatever music you got, drinking my drink, having just my good old little time, feeling myself. I am the complete opposite. So while he's out dancing on the dance floor, I'm going to be in the corner silently encouraging him. I may have a drink in my hand. I don't really know. I'm not a big drinker. So I figure a good way to describe me usually tends to be that song here by Alessia Cara. So if you know that song, it's pretty much me. I'm in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> I love that song. I get it. I mean, I can't, if we were at the same party... I would technically be there, too, checking on you after right. our, like, song breaks, you know, or a song I don't really care for so much. Like, ah, I'm gonna go check on Nicole real quick. <laughs> I'll be back. True. We've been to some of the same parties, and I can honestly say that every time, like, he was the only one that consistently, like, stopped the middle of his dance floor fun to come be like, are you good? Yeah. Like, what's up? That Do you need you. another drink? Yeah, I gotta get my friend good, too. <laughs> I mean, come on, it's a party. <laughs> so, with that being said... Let's move into some of these. These are, like, really cool ideas. Like, I think the way that we both went about it was really nifty. I found some, like, people that actually, like, had these chances that Nicole's about to explain. I, yeah, I don't, we have no idea what we did here. We just found <laughs> random facts and we're like, this is fun information. Let's tell people literally how literally. I approached it. So... But yeah, so my first fact was, you know, what are the chances you're going to be struck by lightning? Well, according to the National Weather Service, there's a 1 in 15,300 chance of being struck in an 80-year lifespan, or 1 in 1,222,000 chance per year. Wow. <laughs> now, with that being said, let's break into this a little bit with a guy named Roy Sullivan, who can actually be found in the Guinness World uh, Book of World Records. For being the human lightning conduct, uh, conductor is actually, like, his, the nickname he was given after he's been struck by lightning seven times. Not oh. once, not twice. He he defeated these odds that Nicole just gave us, blow, blew them out the water. And when I was reading them, like, the ways wow. that he was getting struck, it wasn't like he was out trying to make it happen. He wasn't standing in the middle of a field with a lightning rod being like, hey guys, I'm here. They were all in like, just Safety. situation. He was a um a park ranger for the, uh, of the United States at the Shenandoah National Park. And actually, in his last time, he said the, his first time being struck by lightning was his, was the worst one, like, that was the most painful. His last time of being struck, and he was struck in the time of, like, 19... Or I think it was 1943 to, like, 1977 was the year spans of him being struck wow. by lightning. Um, and then on his Crazy. last time, he was in a fresh pool, like, water, of water up in the Shenandoah National Park fishing. And after he was struck by lightning, he actually realized there was a bear... That was trying to steal trout that was on his fishing line. And he actually hit the bear with a stick. Jesus. And he claims that he uh, that was the 22nd bear he's ever hit in his life. I don't know if this guy is a thrill adventurer too, like on top of it. But out there trying to get hit by lightning. The fact that he was struck seven times by lightning was crazy. And like I said, one, he was in a truck for one of them. And because his window was cracked. The rubber, like, it didn't conduct like it should have. It just went around. It actually went inside of the window, and that's how it ended up hitting him. That's like, nuts. Right. Like, it's so crazy to think that he randomly has been struck by lightning 
seven it's times. crazy that he's alive, because I literally well, wrote down that it can cause, like, obviously did, it has burns, but, like, you can have cardiac and respiratory arrest, I don't think like, he did survive all of them, but he is dead now. He did pass away. Well, I mean, so, no, but like, yeah, it survived. is crazy that he survived every single one of them. Seven times. And they did say, like, his first one, there was very, like, severe burning from it, like, on, I think, the left or right side of his body, that Near the heart. first lightning struck hit. I was like, that is so crazy. I'm like, I'm afraid, and that it's so crazy because I have, like, uh, during a thunderstorm, I'll be a little bit scared of, like, lightning coming through my window or something and being like, oh my god, I don't want to get struck by that. So the fact that this guy has been struck seven times. That, see, I'm the opposite of that, too. Like, I run outside in the storm, and I'm like, I'm going to take a picture and see if I can get, like, a oh, video. God. I literally, like, will stand And there. I'll probably be the one that gets struck by lightning <laughs> out of the two of us just because of this situation right here. Yeah, that's, that's probably how it'll happen. It will. So <laughs> let's move on to our next fact, which is what are your chances of winning the lottery? So I only wrote down two lotteries here. The U.S. Powerball, you have a 1 in 292, roughly, million chance of winning. Mega Millions, you have a 1 in about 302 million chance. And those are for winning, like, the jackpot. Not necessarily just, like, getting a couple of numbers and winning right, like something. Right, that's picking all the numbers right. and getting the, the biggest amount. It's like it's 88 million, you got all the numbers, and it was just you, and you don't get it. 88 million dollars. Something I did read too about the lottery is that 70% of people that have won the jackpots win off of quick picks and not picking their numbers. Really? Yeah. That's, I don't know. I don't even play the lottery because I, I suck at it. But like, just to kind of put that into perspective with the lightning, you're over 200 times more likely to get struck by lightning than to win the, lot, the lottery. Oh, I got a couple people here that have that definitely surpassed that. With scratch-offs, so obviously we all know scratch-offs. Mikey fucking wins on them. <laughs> and then he turns with, like, I love Mikey because he wins. And then he's like, if I won once, I'll win again. <laughs> and he puts it back in the machine. And he gets more. Meanwhile, I'm standing there like, I couldn't even win <laughs> once. And this boy's confident that he's going to win again. I love it. But with scratch-offs, the, like, higher price they are, the better chance you have of winning, basically. So, like, in New York, we have one called Loose Change, which is, like, a $1 scratch-off. And with those, you have, like, a 1 in 4.71 odd of winning. So, that's not bad, necessarily. Right. But, not, Still, like, I mean, you're that's it's still like, a risk. That can be just winning your money Your dollar. Right. right. That's true. Like, that's what that considers, that it's 1 of 4 that you're at least going to break even. Right. Exactly. So, I didn't know if it did make a difference of, like, well, obviously, I know that it makes a difference of, uh, like, scratch off. And lottery number pickings, like, what I meant by that is, like, the if the chance of winning it are different, like, if it's harder to win one, like, picking the numbers, or if it's harder to win off a scratch-off. Oh. So, um, I have a couple people here that I have that have won, like, kind of a little bit of both. Like, uh, David and Kathleen Long actually won two million dollar jackpot the first one was uh they won the million dollars in 2013 the second one that they won was another million dollars and well i say a million dollars but th this was in england or europe so it was oh. pounds i think you know yeah. it had the, the little like yeah. dash thing and it kept saying that they won that on like friday and it was in a march wasn't sure if that was of 2021 or 2020 so Pretty recent, though. Yeah, you know, they were probably seven, eight years apart. You can't even win five. Uh, we have Michael Christensen. I I practiced this so much, too. Of course I was going to fumble. He is from Norfolk, Nebraska. He hit the jackpot twice in the same year. And he actually won $100,000 from a 20x times, like, money scratch-off ticket. And he won another $50,000 from a... Money clip scratch ticket. The chances of winning both of the hundred thousand dollar prize and the fifty thousand dollar prize were a one in eighty thousand chance, yeah. and he hit it both times. Last person that I had that I thought pretty interesting. His name is Richard Lustig. He is an American man who has won seven state sponsored lottery games, from all ranging from nineteen ninety three to two thousand ten. 
his prizes totaled over a million dollars. I didn't know if that was like, you know how we have the New York Powerball? Yeah. I'm, I think that that's like, he won seven of those type of games in different states. You know what I mean? Like, that makes sense, right? Because it was seven state-sponsored lottery games. Or it so, could just be seven different, like, New York state games. Like, no, they, no, they were saying he was, they were seven different oh, states. Different state. Then, yes. Yeah, that would make sense. No, yeah, he went, like, so that was that made me think, too. Maybe. I was like, huh. Yeah. Did he have a better chance? Like, did he know seven states where he had a good chance? Like, you okay. know, I just, I feel like for him, there had to have been something. Yeah, there's no something. There's no way you won seven state sponsored lottery tickets. Like the people that won the million dollars when I was reading that, they won the lottery and it was also a drawing too. So there was ten people that were guaranteed to get the hundred or the million dollar pound or whatever, the million pounds. And so like Kath or David was telling Kathleen, like, I know I have this. Like I don't know why he felt so confident, but he was like, I know. <laughs> But he almost actually almost didn't end up getting his first winnings because they have to, like, reclaim the, I don't know, some code or something. And he almost didn't do that. So when it came down to the second time of him winning, he actually, like, that was the first thing he did was made sure. And then he told his wife, like, come here and look at this. That's crazy. I, I don't, I can't win a shit, but only, I've won one time on a lottery ticket. It was a crazy eights, which they don't even sell in New York anymore, and I won $80 one time. That's still a good one. But I can't tell you how much that I've spent, like... I got this cute... Literally. Little thing. I literally went to get a tattoo, got my <laughs> tattoo, we left, stopped at a gas station, because I'm pretty sure I needed gas and a drink. He buys a scratch off. Wins like fifty bucks, which just happens to be the amount the girls oh, tattoo. Forty because I need a pack of cigarettes oh, too. Right. So I literally got the tattoo and a pack of cigarettes, and it was ridiculous. We turned right around and went right back to the house where I had just gotten my tattoo, and he literally just handed it to scratch off or like the rest of the money, and was like, you know, you go. I was like, I want that dragon right there. It was crazy, and I, I think the most I ever won was when we went up to the, the Turning Stone for my birthday. We ended up, uh, I spent like an hour trying to pick out Kino numbers and I ripped up that that ticket did another one in a matter of like two minutes went to bed I woke up the next morning I went and checked it and I won $1,500 that's crazy I can't win that shit so kudos to all the people that have any kind of luck to win that ever <laughs> so I don't really have fun people for these but I have a bunch more facts for you guys so, if you get struck by lightning, what are you probably going to need? Maybe some CPR? You never know. It's cardiac arrest. It's possible, right? Right. So, what are the chances of, like, if you, like, you know, have an incident where you need CPR immediately, but you're not in a hospital, you're at home, or you're, like, at a beach, you know, having, well, I don't know about a beach. I imagine someone there is trained, but, you know, you're somewhere where you don't expect, like, help to be. Right. What are your chances of surviving? So apparently almost 45% of out-of-hospital cardiac arrest victims survive if, like, a bystander administers CPR before, like, actual EMTs or first responders get there. So that's almost one out of, you know, every two, which it sounds low, but that's actually like really high. good. Right. Oh, well, like, like, that's a good survival rate, right? right? Yeah, yes. Okay. I think That's so. right. Me too. That's what I was thinking. But then you just said it. And it kind of, I was like, wait, so what is she trying to say no, here? Okay, like, yeah. We want it. I'd no. like it to be higher. But right. I mean, but no, I agree. I think that's, a, it's almost 50-50. I mean, I know it sucks that, right. like, because you're right with technology and stuff. I do wish that it could be a little bit higher. But the fact that still it's. You still got a 50% chance. I, I mean, it, it, nobody, you don't necessarily expect that to happen either. So it's kind of hard to prepare for it. Like in the schools, I think you have like defibrillators and things like that on the walls that might, don't, aren't those supposed to help yeah. with it? So, I mean, like, that's kind of like, that's a good scenario, you know what I mean? But like what, what happens? in the middle of the street. Right. Or when you're on a nature trail and, oh, you know, yeah, people are walking that. by. And that's where, it's, you know, things like that are prone. Uh, I feel more prone to happen, you know, right. that working be, out and stuff. It'd be cool if there were, like, some kind of pocket device you could carry that somehow <laughs> helps, like, the, like a different, like a pocket defibrillator right. or something crap. I have a cute kind of little story that would fit in between this, actually. So one day, me and a group of 
group of friends go up to Watkins Glen. We went to this nature part of it and there was this big like mountain type scenario that we had to walk up. So we're walking for probably like two, three hours. Now we turn back around because we want to get back down and we realize we're really high up and we're like, whoa, we felt lost. My friend starts joking around and is like, oh my God, I'm so scared. Somebody call the Coast Guard. I need to know how to get down. The guy that's standing next to us literally turns around and says, do you, uh, to get back down, the exit's right over here. And just to let you know, I'm a Coast Guard. What are the chances? <laughs> that's excellent. Like, I, we loved that. Oh I God. thought that was so funny and crazy. Like, of all the professions Perfect in the world lighting. that you could have screamed, of all the people right. that could be standing next to you, you literally just, are like, bring in the Coast Guards. Because they're not really, you know, like, Coast Guards aren't really going to no. help you on land, obviously. Obviously. So it was funny that we really had a Coast Guard right there. That's nuts. Oh, my God. That definitely fit in perfectly. <laughs> so I guess I have a few, quite a few morbid kind of facts. Sorry that it, they're a little dark. So what are your chances of being killed by a tornado? Ooh. Um, so apparently it's one about one in every 60,000. That is your chance of. Now, is it of people, or is that of, like, I know it's going to sound stupid, but of every tornado that happens, like, the 60,000th tornado would... People, I believe. Okay. That's a good question, because I'm pretty sure it was people, based on how I read it, but, like, I didn't technically... Look I didn't in. look at it from that angle of, like, it could be one in every 60... It can't be one in every 60,000 tornadoes. I think like that's a lot, right? Yeah, it's <laughs> got to be one in every 60,000 people. Okay. Um, but the odds, obviously, they it's kind of hard to put an exact number on it because it kind of depends on, like, your location. Like, we have an area in the United States referred to as Tornado Valley, I think it's called. So, it's like I think it's, like, the central part of the United States where, you know, tornadoes run rampant. Like, right. Kansas, you know, Dorothy, the Wizard of Oz. Don't forget to check out the last episode, by the way. Saying, Mandala. Wizard of Oz affected. But, like, that kind of... You know, it can affect, like, the numbers, too, but also, like, your actual, like, building that you're in. So, like, if you're in a mobile home, that's obviously not going to be as safe as, like, if I'm at work at a corporate building, like, right, the Chase Bank building or something. Right. right. Something that's been reinforced and, like, built to withstand things. Like, they know, like, nature happens and have the money to pay to prevent it, basically. Right. So that can kind of affect your odds also, obviously. You know, if, if you're in a trailer next door to a school, you probably want to run into the school and hide in the basement versus sitting in your trailer. You're actually, I saw something called So You Think You'd Survive One Time, and since I'm mentioning it, if you're actually in a trailer and the tornado does come, you're supposed to leave the trailer. Mm -hmm. you're, yeah, you have to get in the car yeah. with the highest safety rating. So, just keep that in mind, because they do seem to be popping up in unsuspected places. I thought the so, same thing. We just talked about that at my work the other day. I was like, you know, when did New York become, like, obviously, I've heard of Tornado Valley. Right. But, like, any other place in New York, it was very rare for us to have tornadoes. And the fact that, like, even Phoenix themselves have had tornado watching warnings, like, right. it's, it's, it's a little weird. That's that climate change that nobody believes in. I, I'm telling you, New York's weather is so... Like, we used to joke about it before, but what it really is right now, I don't want to get into all of it, but... Right. There, you can't it's tell me scary. there's no difference. It's very different. Right. But, uh, yeah. So let's not get too far <laughs> Right, into sorry, that. I didn't mean that. Back on to no. what are the chances. We'll discuss that someday. Oh, yeah, we are. Worry. I want to, so... <laughs> So, next, what are your chances of being killed by a meteorite? I know. Random as hell, right? Whoa. And obviously, like, it's that is also kind of hard to predict. So, it's a big range that I do have written. Because there are different people that have done, like, math problems, basically, to try to figure out your probability, like, scientists and shit. But it ranges anywhere from rough, roughly 1 in 3,000 to 1 in 250,000. But just to look at that, you have more of a chance of being struck by a meteorite than you do to win the lottery. That's crazy. <laughs> right? Like, like, you don't think about that. Right. Because when was the last time you heard a person dies from being meteorite. struck by a meteorite? But apparently that's a thing that happens that nobody discusses. I think when I was looking into the lottery, that popped up as, like, uh, you have a better chance of being struck by a meteorite, literally, than... 
to win the lottery. And I was like, no, that's not true. But no, that's true. So they're, you know, sorry to burst everybody's hope there. The next one's a little bit grim. I did put, what are your chances of being killed in a mass shooting in America? I think I actually, I didn't specify, but I'm pretty sure it, I looked up U.S. facts. So it's actually one person in every 11,125 will be killed by a gun in a mass shooting. In general, one person in every 315 will wow. be just, like, shot by a gun. Wow. Period. That's crazy. <laughs> but, let's move on. So, what are your chances of dying in a house fire? According to um, the National Fire Protection Association, in 2019, out of, I didn't, I don't have, like, I didn't simplify the math or, like, find a percentage exactly, but in 2019, there were 1,291,500 fires, and in those, there were 3,700 civilian deaths. So, like, not wow. including firefighters, just, like, people that Have passed were, away in the fire. Yeah, were in the home at wow. the time and couldn't get out, which I feel like that's a lot, honestly. That, that lot. really sucks, because I feel like fire should be able to be prevented, and, like, a lot of these cases are, like, apartments or, like, homes where... These people aren't in control of, like, heating, for example, or, like, how right. well their stove cooks, and, you know, shit just go catches fire, and there's nothing they can do. Right. But, I have some happier things. Let's move on a little bit to finding a four-leaf clover. Ooh. Want some good luck? I like them. Right? So, your chances of finding a four-leaf clover are 1 in 10,000. Not terrible, not, you know, particularly good. But apparently the four-leaf clover is like an inherent gene that the clovers have. So if you find one, there's actually likely to be more in that area. Um, there is one girl named Gabriella Gerhardt in Wisconsin who in 2019, I guess, entered the Guinness Book of World Records because she collected 451 four-leaf clovers in one hour. What? Yeah. And so That's maybe Wisconsin's crazy. where the luck is. And then, I didn't even know these existed, but there is a five-leaf clover, which apparently the odds of finding that are, like, one in one million. So, that's probably why I don't know they exist. I had to Google a picture because I'm literally like, this isn't real. Right. Like, this this is supposed to be a legit site telling me this, and you're lying that there's a four-leaf or a five-leaf clover. No, it was real. So It if, really is. If anybody has some pictures of those, it'd be really cool to see. So, right. please drop them and, like, share. Don't. Don't be hoarding all the good pictures. <laughs> all that luck. <laughs> right. Spread it around. It's just it's a photo. How much can you really be giving <laughs> up? I don't know if you all consider this happy or not, but what are the chances of having multiple babies at once? So your odds of having twins are at, like naturally are actually only like one in 250 apparently. So that's actually like a wow. lot of like possible twins that could be up in there. Yeah. There's triplets. That happens every 1 in 10,000 pregnancies. And then we have quadruplets, which happens 1 in every 700,000 pregnancies. Wow. And there are a lot of things that, like, can affect that, obviously. Like, the, you know, your family history, if you have twins or whatever. And I your was going to say, I think uh, if I was straight, I, my possibilities of having twins would have been really high because my dad was a twin. Really? Yep. My dad's a twin. So And, and then it dad. skips the generation. Wait. So then, wouldn't it mean my kids would be would have a twin? Well, if he's a twin, either then he would have to have a set of twins, or like, does he have brothers and sisters? Yeah, I think one of like him or his brother or sisters would have to have twins, and if not, then that would be like the generation it skips, and then you could have twins. Oh, okay. I was gonna. I just know that it does it. They skip a generation or whatever. Yeah. And I know that with my dad being the a kid or my dad being a twin could That's higher your crazy. chance. I didn't know you didn't know that. Yeah, I'm not that. Yeah. Um, I guess, like, race actually plays a role, too. Like, I forgot. I think, like, they want to say that, like, Latinos or Hispanics are, like, more, like, like, the most likely to have multiple babies at the same time. African-American people were also, like, more likely to have uh, extra babies up in their little wow. uterus there. So... I don't, that's really weird. That I mean, I think, weird. I would, just, I'm pretty sure, you know, that's pretty factual. I did write down that that part came from reproductivefacts.org. So, I mean, 
Uh, yeah, that's pretty... <laughs> like, I feel like we can trust them. This part is not necessarily happy unless you're looking to have some babies. So what are the chances that, like, your birth control method is going to fail? <laughs> <laughs> Right? Hi. <laughs> He's another one where Mikey fits right in. Right? I have a lot of backstory <laughs> today. So, Latex condoms, they are 98% effective, right? But they fail around 13% of the time. Now, I'll let you all know right now the reason that, like, these things fail uh-huh. are basically user error. Okay. So, like, I guess I don't... <laughs> Without getting into too much details and too many, like, things, like, one example they said was, like, there's error... At the tip of a condom, and if that's not properly like, taken out, yeah, then it can pop, and then exactly. But um, so my question right here is, how is it ninety eight percent effective, but thirteen percent? Because the ninety yeah. the effective rate is basically assuming that you've done it right. Oh, okay. So if you so I'm taking out user error. Right. That, that's done. Right. Okay. So these I fails see now. are most of the fails are user error. There's obviously going to be some cases where you know the companies right. fuck up or something like doesn't work right with your body because like you can use oils and stuff that can fuck up the condom also. Mm-hmm. That's so so crazy. Yeah, I don't know if there's disclaimers about that on the package. You know what I mean? So right, like if there's not, then you could just have a disintegrating condom and you right so i mean i don't know all the details but basically the effective is like if it's perfect use you know this is how effective it is and the fails are like most of the time like users messed up so birth control pills with those a lot of the error tends to be the fact that people just miss their pills or there's a lot of pills you have to take at like the same time every day for it to be really effective right. which obviously people have lives so it's really hard for them They are trying to make some new ones now where you don't have to necessarily hit that exact time. You can do more of a window time frame. But on average, you're about 7, you know, it's a 7% fail, like, rate. So it's anywhere from 5 to 9. On average, it's, I'd say, 7. That's, like, the medium. But, that again, if you are really good at taking them, it shouldn't be that bad. Um, There's only a 0.3% fail rate. With perfect use. So if you're remembering to take them and, you know, like, you're not... Like, say you're on a different medication that interacts with it and it doesn't... Do not take antibiotics while you're on birth control. Is that true? Yeah. That's how I my mom got pregnant for me. Really? I think you can, but... Well, I, they might be able to but now, I, but Well, yeah, I think you can, but I think the problem is, like, they can decrease the effectiveness of it. So, like, the like you have to basically be yeah, warned and counseled. and find it, pretty much, and that's, like... Don't quote me on that, but right. I think that's how it goes all in I know, my experience. All I know is that my mm-hmm. mom was on birth control. She was given antibiotics. They didn't say anything to her about, like... Not being able to do anything, you know what I mean? Because it's like if a doctor, right. if they knew about it back then, they would have right. said like, "Hey, if you're on birth control and you're taking this, you have to watch right when you're doing intercourse because of this." But she wasn't told any of that, and I and I'm here. I feel like that's a pharmacist fail right there. I don't really necessarily know, but like I said, based off the things I've learned, uh, that. But like I said, that's also from the 90s. You know what I mean? Things definitely. There are a lot more disclaimers out there nowadays and like more preventative measures taken. People don't want to get sued anymore. Basically. Like, you're probably the reason that this happened. So, but there are other birth control methods too. So there's the patch in the ring, which the patch you like stick on you one and it lasts like a week. Right. And then you get to replace it. And then like you go one week with no patch and the ring, you know, it's a ring. So yes, um, you self insert the ring, but with those, they fail about 7% of the time. So basically about the same as birth control. I know with the patch, a lot of people say like it falls off. I don't necessarily know the issues with the ring. We just kind of went general here. And then, like, there's also the depot shot. Right. Um, That fails about 4% of the time. Which I wonder if that has anything to do with, like, people spilling it. Like, not getting the full dose necessarily. Because it's in a syringe. Some, like, you know what I mean? Right. I mean, if your doctor does it, I wouldn't assume it happens. But you can have that mailed to you. Right. With telemedicine, so. There's a chance that you're right. You could just accidentally squirt a little bit before. And then, God forbid, you can't afford to buy it out of pocket and your insurance won't cover anymore because they're like, no, it's 
good for three months, we're not paying for more. Right. You know what I mean? Then yeah. you're like, you could have time where you're not covered. So I could see that. And then the last little contraceptive I have is the IUD, which is planted in the uterus. Your doctor does that for you. Those apparently only fail 0.1 to 0.8% of the time. There's like two different kinds you can use. So one of them is, one of them is you know, the 0.8, and then the other one failed 0.1 to 0.4% of the time. Those numbers <laughs> are amazing! <laughs> yeah, the IUD was definitely the better of all of them, like, honestly. Yeah. The only thing that's more effective is abstinence. <laughs> right, the fucking thing they always preached into our heads in school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna preach to you. You do what you want to do. It's not my life. Right? Just be so. Right? Exactly. Like if you're gonna have a freaking kid, take care of it. Don't freaking throw your demons onto it. Like, <laughs> I agree. Handle your shit and then go handle your shit. <laughs> so just a side note with that, I also did write down that uh, women are more likely to get pregnant within 48 hours of their ovulation day, and like on the ovulation day, obviously. And, like, if you were trying to get pregnant, you have a 36% chance of getting pregnant within the first year. But, obviously, like, age varies into it also. So, like, 20 to 24-year-olds have an 86% chance of getting pregnant. 20 to 25-year-olds are at 78. 30 to 34-year-olds are at 63. And then 35 to 39 is 52. And, obviously, like, it just gets lower until you hit menopause. And you can no longer do such things. You can still have fun, but you don't have to worry about having multiple babies. Right. You don't have to worry about <laughs> carrying them chiller. <laughs> so, now that your birth control has failed and you have some kids, <laughs> you're hoping one of them is going to go to play professional sports, right? Because somebody's got to bring home the money and put you in a good retirement home or buy you a mansion over by the sea, whatever. That's right. <laughs> There's about 8 million high school athletes that, you know, basically try to go to college and play play sports and make some kind of life out of it. Only 6%, which is about 480,000, actually move to the college level, which is called the wow. NCAA. Right. Of those that go to the college, 9.9% .9 will go on to play pro professional baseball. So that, that's not terrible odds, but it gets lower from there. Like, but apparently 7.4% play men's ice hockey, which... Oh, yeah. I mean, I know ice hockey is a thing, but, like, I didn't know it was that much of a thing. Like, you know what I mean? I've never heard, like, oh, look at the college ice hockey team. But, like, football and baseball, you know, you hear well, about Syracuse them. Syracuse Crunch. Aren't they? Are that's they? ice. I don't know. Oh, well, that's I don't, true. That's why I was like, Oh, well, that wait. is true. <laughs> I guess, I don't know. Maybe we're just not hockey people in this area, then. Yeah, I don't. I, don't, I mean, I've been to a couple crunch games, but I don't think that it's very well... Not compared to Syracuse basketball. For right. some reason, basketball, like, Syracuse basketball is huge, but yeah. hockey's not really that much. You're right. It's weird. And football's always big everywhere. And baseball, oh, yeah. oh my god, it's New the, York. Right. So baseball sky is cheese. huge. Yeah. Because, right, we have the Sky Yankees. Cheese for college. And then you have, or for minors. And then you have the Yankees and the Mets. So we oh, literally yeah. have two different, like, professional teams. And, like, but by right. the way, I did look up whether, like, there's more Yankees fans or Mets fans. Didn't write it down, but definitely more Yankees fans than Mets fans. Just throwing that out there because, hey, hey, I'm one. Back to the stats. 1.6% of the college-level athletes will move on to football, like professional football. Only 1.2% move on to men's basketball, and only 0.8% move on to women's basketball. So that's wow. a 480,000. Those chances aren't great, which really sucks because that's very discouraging. And, like, a right. lot of people have talent and simply just don't get the right breaks. That's not right. That sucks. Right. That does suck. I wish there was more we could do for them. Because could you imagine the difference we could make in so many kids' lives if there was a little bit of, like, more of a glimmer of hope that they make it? Make it. Right. That's really weird. Because I actually knew someone that played college-level football for Syracuse, too. So it's weird to think, like, he got in. He was literally semi-pro. Right. Like, out of everyone. Right. Yeah, that like, was kind of crazy. Anyway, I do have another morbid fact. I guess I guess the rest are actually kind of morbid because it's easy to find death facts. And that's apparently where I went to when I was researching this late at night. I'm sorry. I'll try to do better next time. The odds of dying in the terrorist attack are 1 in 9.3 million. So about 0.05%. 
And obviously, like, this factors in areas where there's high conflict, though. So it's not talking, like, just the United States where, like, we freaking had 9-11, which we've discussed 9-11. But, like, you know, we've had some incidents. Like, this is also including, like, Iran and Pakistan and all that where, like, what's happening right now in Afghanistan when the Taliban's, like, trying to take over and stuff? Like, that would count. You know what I mean? So that seems a little bit low when you're like, it's terrorism. Like, that's not a good number. You know what I mean? We'd like it lower. At the same time, when you have areas that are at, like, 90% on their own being factored in, that's going to increase the average. Right. Like, it's it's basically an average when you're talking about these stats. Uh, There was an organization called Cato. It's actually a UK organization. I don't know how the hell I got there, but... They use information from the Global Terrorism Database, RAND Corporation, the UN Population Division, and a couple other things to, like, compare your chances of, like, dying in a terrorist attack between different countries. The one that's actually most likely to have an issue is the UK. They have the chance, their chances are 1 in 964,351. The US is, our chances are only 1 in every... 3,241,363. So we're literally like, like the UK is like three times more likely to be attacked than us. And we're like, we gotta get the terrorists. Like, what? And then I thought it was funny. I threw Germany in here because they're at one in every 23,234,378. And I'm like, you think of Germany? I I still think of World War Two. You know what I mean? Like obviously that's not right. Like I need to get up on my like what's going on in Germany. Right. I know they have a female president, and like for a minute they were like, I think they were the only ones. They were the only ones that could save like Europe's dollar or whatever, or like I think it was them that could save it. I don't remember though. They're way less likely to be attacked by a freaking terrorist. Like right. why don't they have a terror problem? Next, I did. I don't know how I got here either, but I put down a man's risk of getting breast cancer in their lifetime is 1 in 833, whereas the risk of getting testicular cancer is 1 in 250 throughout their lifetime. So I guess these are a couple little health facts to like remind you to get checkups. Right. Like, it's just so- Men can get breast cancer, and I don't feel like it's talked about enough to where I it should feel okay for... If you feel a lump, you should not be afraid if you're a man or a woman to go and get that checked out. Right. You know? Like, you shouldn't be looked down upon because you're a man walking in with a lump on your breast. No. Right. You should be looked at just as if a woman was. You have cancer. You know? Right. Or you could. Hopefully you don't. Right. Hopefully but not. Like- and then, like, it is funny because if you think about it, in a group full of men, if you were to sit down, the group, the guy that had to tell his friends... He had testicular cancer. They would all feel for him. They'd yeah. all be like, oh my God. That's the guy that life. has breast cancer that sat down with his group of friends, they would all probably laugh at him. Right. Honestly. It's horrible. Like, and that, I feel like that's just kind of wrong. Like, that's something. No, yeah, like, but coming from, I was always big. So, like, I always, like, took a feel because I know I have breastuses and... There is a chance of me right. getting a cancer there. You were being smart. Like, honestly, it's a smart thing to do. You would literally rather risk dying than to, like... You know, honestly, I know it sucks because people are just shitty. But, honestly, wouldn't you rather someone just risk laughing at you right. and not understanding? But my thing is that if your friends like, are going to laugh at you over having breast so. cancer... Then maybe you should check out who your friends are. Exactly. That was going to be my second <laughs> one also. <laughs> you yeah. know, like... Like, your life is important, and you deserve better friends in it. Yeah. So, yeah, 100%, I agree. And the last couple facts I have, I did have to throw COVID in here, because we're talking about what are the chances, and that's a huge fucking thing people talk about. So, I did put in the death rates, and your chance of dying of the COVID vaccine, the vaccine, is... 0.0019%, which, if I remember my, like, decimals right, is, like, one in every... 100,000, right? I think it's one in every thousand. So, yeah, so maybe one to two in every thousand would die of the COVID vaccine. And But the thing about that is when they report those facts, it's any death after they receive the vaccine. So it doesn't have to be clear. You could get hit by a car after you got the vaccine, and they're going to consider that as a... As the death of the vaccine. Right. It literally, it doesn't have to be a clear actual cause of, like, the vaccine doesn't have to be the clear cause of death 
for it to count in the report that gets sent back. Which is weird. <laughs> right. Like, why would you, if you, honestly, everybody thinks that the government's out to, like, get us. Well, if that's the case, why are they had like, why are they padding that? They wouldn't want the vaccine to be associated right. with that. No. So that wouldn't make any sense. Um, I know another issue was there was a, dis- a disease or disorder. There was a syndrome called TCS. I didn't write down what it was. But I believe that was like the blood clotting or something that was happening with the Johnson and Johnson's Janssen vaccine. People made a big deal about that. And they're like, we're not getting vaccinated. And so honestly, I wanted to write it down because it bothered me. Like at the time, I'm like, okay, well, is that a legit thing? Right. And I mean, there were 42 confirmed cases out of 13 million. So it's like really. You can't. Like, then you can't use that. Right. Like, as an excuse. That's my problem with these. There were also two confirmed cases of that same syndrome for the Moderna vaccine. But that was out of 339 million that were given. So we're talking, between the two of them, 352 million vaccines given and a total of 45, 44 cases. Wow. You know what I'm saying? That's, like, yeah. That's like saying 44 people got fucking somehow mauled by a lion at the zoo. So, so we're no, not going to go to the zoo. Yeah, you're exactly. right. Exactly. No, like, that's not, I'm sorry to discredit your reasoning, but that's no longer a fighting case. So now compare to that. So one in two out of every thousand die of the vaccine. Now, what are your chances of dying of COVID itself? You have a 1.7%, and that's over the last 30 days with the U.S. mortality rate. That's the death rate. So that's 1.7 out of every 100 could die of COVID itself, which is way more than the 1 to 2 out of every 1,000. Right. So, I mean, that's way more likely to kill you than the vaccine is. And then, obviously, everybody compares it to the flu. So, I looked into the 2019-2020 flu season. There were 38 million people sick and only 22,000 died. So, I pulled out a calculator and I was like, what is that? That's .00057. So, three zeros and then a five seven. So, that's like fucking way less likely than either one of these other things. Like, that's about one in 1.7 million. Right. So, it's not, no, COVID is not like the flu. It is very different, and it, getting the vaccine definitely decreases your chances of having serious repercussions. Right, if you encounter COVID. So, I had to go, I had to let you all know about that, because we did a podcast called What Are the Chances, and that is a huge thing in society right now, and I like to look up facts, so, right, like, those are facts. I'm sorry, guys. You don't know what to tell you. You don't have to like it. I'm not telling you to go get vaccinated. I appreciate it if you do, but right. if you don't want to. We're just putting out the facts there. Right. In a really cool way, I feel. You know, we <laughs> looked it up in a way that, like I said, I, I haven't seen anybody on YouTube cover anything like this. Well, with that being <laughs> said, we just got to close this bad boy out. And uh, thank you guys. Thank Leave you guys. the likes, loves, comments all Subscribe. below. Yep. And that was another episode of Tainted Warriors. Bye. Tainted Warriors, a TW Productions podcast.